subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an update. Hello, willkommen in Homburg, the größte Flohmarkt Südwestdeutschlands. Hello everyone. Today on Lady Mary Bath, we're visiting the largest flea market in southwestern Germany. Can't wait to take you along. Join me. The Homburg flea market has been in existence since 1975 and at the peak season, which is now in June, there are 1,500 different vendors. Anything from antiques, linens, glassware, and everything in between. And I can't wait to take you to all these different booths and discover some treasures. It's a beautiful day for the Homburg flea market. We're getting an early start. You'll want to do that so that you find a parking spot. And this is our first booth. And I see some familiar salt glazed stoneware. And you always want to turn it over, look at the back stamp. You will see that MR. And that is actually a company that started in 1879. They became the leading German stoneware manufacturer. We'll talk about them a little bit more as we find some more pieces. And they do have lots of vintage mid-century items. This coffee pot is lots of fun. That looks to be maybe from the early 60s with the flowers. The back stamp tells us it's from Bavaria in the Anya pattern. You could easily mix that with some white dishes to add something of interest for your table. You don't have to have the entire set. The Hofbauer Birds. That is a pattern that's been very popular with American collectors. This is a napkin holder some unusual pieces, including stemware. And this is highly collectible in that beautiful ruby cased crystal and a gorgeous vase. And the price is always right here at the flea market. Echt Bleikristall, it is polished lead crystal. I just love it when the original sticker is on. You occasionally find a piece at a thrift store, but never such a variety and the classic blue and white kitchen essentials. Here you've got your salt, flour, sugar, and all of your spice jars. This is a lovely pattern that's actually called Indisch Blau. We will talk more about that in the next episode where we go to a German consignment store. And this is known as a Zwiebelmuster, which is the onion pattern. And we'll definitely talk about that in depth coming up in the next episode. When shopping a German flea market, you'll want to have the three C's, cash, a carrying bag, and comfortable shoes. You might even want to bring a rolling suitcase. And here is a shabby chic pattern. Oh, those roses are lovely. Let's look at the back stamp. It doesn't look very old. Casanova, which is a newer pattern. And that would be a delightful breakfast set with those pink bowls. And a bit of chinoiserie style here with the blue and white rabbit. Let's see if there's a back stamp. Doesn't look like there's one, but that's quite all right. You could definitely incorporate that into your spring setting. And lots of mid-century glassware as well. We're going to find so many patterns that definitely are from the 60s. And here we have the original sticker. It was probably displayed in someone's china cabinet. And that is such a beauty. I just love it. It's too bad they didn't enjoy these and remove the stickers, but you know, it can have a new life with you. There's so much to see. You can even have some French crepe while you're there. Shop a little, eat a little. It's just a great day at the flea market. This set of crystal is lovely and quite an extensive collection. I like the way the light hits it. It really shows off the design. And that is 1960s. 
And these small glasses have my attention. They're almost miniature. Familiar, I'm sure, the Rhine wine. Mostly meant for white wine, but of course in this case, it's for smaller spirits. And the larger goblets are quite lovely. There's always something new to discover here, at least new to me. And this pattern I have seen quite a few times. I don't remember if it's in the States or in Germany. And I'm thinking breakfast. The Echt Kobalt. Love that combination of the blue and gold. Delicate teacups. So pretty. And a back stamp that we can research. I'm getting a set of six of these schnapps glasses. Aren't they sweet? They look like the Rhine wine in miniature form. They were 50 cents each. So for a total of three euros, I've got a wonderful set for entertaining. German flea markets offer a nice variety of vintage and antiques, covering tabletop, furnishings, lighting wear, and collections. And if you get hungry for a bite while you're shopping, could stop for a bratwurst. Lots of food vendors here. And I especially like that they have large collections. Here we have some more of the salt glazed stoneware. And this really does make a nice collection if you feature them together. And monogrammed porcelain pieces. How about that? That looks to be French. Just love it a compote, a soup tureen. I'm sure originally there were plates and that you could of course incorporate with your white dishes. And you'll see the variety here and it takes a keen eye because you simply are overwhelmed with lots of merchandise. Take your time, look through and you may see a familiar pattern. This is my everyday Burgenland from Villeroy und Boch and Delft. We just love anything from the Netherlands and the hand-painted blue and white is quite special. And there's the original sticker from Holland. I'm very surprised at the amount of Delft that they have here today. I might have to take home a piece. And you'll want to look for the crazing as well. Make sure you get up close. Sometimes the price can be right, but you just have to know going in. And let's take a look at that gorgeous back stamp. Delft Holland hand painted. I do like this. I'm quite partial to it. It does have some crazing, but I'm perfectly fine with that because you're not eating off of a vase. That's something you use for decor. And this will be perfect for eight euros. Definitely taking this home. And she's even wrapping it up for me. Isn't that nice? I have a bag with some paper and bubble wrap, but I will gladly take that. And she's going to give me my change. There are also some linen pieces here. The last time I was at the flea market, which was probably 20 years ago here in Homburg, they had quite a few linens, not as many today. The blue and white I just love. This is all hand done. Just so much love has gone into these pieces. I probably should have taken this home with the blue and white. That could be an overlay on a side table. You could maybe even make something out of that, some sachets or a pillow. Lots of possibilities. And my Borgelein pattern again. This is a pattern that VNB created in 1926 and I registered in 1995 for my wedding. And it was retired probably by about 2000. And I have it in my home in Germany and in Texas. I couldn't resist this platter from Villore & Bach, the Burgenland pattern in the blue. It was made in several different colors. And this is West Germany, so that dates it. And it looks to me like it's from probably the early 1980s, even though it has a very old pattern. Just love it. Crystal candelabras are perfect for any taste and style. And it also makes a great gift. Keep that in mind when you are flea market shopping. And a stunning set from the Hofbauer Birds collection, a punch bowl with cups. That is quite something. I haven't seen that in the States before, and it is much loved. A crystal biscuit barrel. I'm always looking for these, and I probably should have taken this home. It can fit in any room of your house for so many different purposes. 
lovely linens. I have been waiting to find a linen seller today. And this one has taken excellent care. They've hand washed and ironed everything that they're offering. And the prices are fair. And they are also firm. I actually didn't bargain too much with the flea market sellers today because I found that their prices were good. Fest pies von 5 bis 10 Euro. And I think that that is a deal. So you know the most you'll spend on an item is 10 euros. And this is one of my favorite finds of the day. I just love it in that ecru color. Ivory goes with everything. I have lots of the pillowcases as well. Probably should have bought a few more for our guest rooms. And this round tablecloth. I just love it. And this would also make a great gift, especially when they're in mint condition and the seller has taken excellent care to present these. The price is here from five to 10 euros per piece. So I know I can't go wrong. And this round overlay is absolutely exquisite. So happy with this. It's got an eyelet pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? And they also have the square Euro shams. And this is a piece that has been handmade on to linen. The edging has been added. And this is a square overlay, which is very popular in Germany. So anywhere from five to 10 euros. And I know I've already got some deals. And here are some stoneware punch sets. These are quite amazing with the finials. We have anything from a castle, grapes, to some wildlife. And that looks like maybe a turkey that's on top. And the acorns, the leaves, such detail. I'm just amazed at some that I had not seen before. We do have one at our home in Germany that's a little bit more traditional, but it doesn't have the interesting wildlife. Even the handles on the cup are quite interesting. And the impressed trademark back stamp there is MR from Marzi und Remi. And that is a company that started in 1879 and they became the leading German stoneware manufacturer and they closed in 1994. Crystal vases are the perfect gift to have on hand if you're looking for something to bring to a host, hostess, even a birthday gift, take that to your local florist and you've got a deal and something on hand. This set was a bargain at 30 euros for all of the cups, saucers, plates, and coffee pot, sugar, and creamer. I passed on it just because we have similar pieces at our home in Germany, and I told a friend about it later, and she was most upset that I didn't purchase it for her. Wish I had known she wanted it. Mock and porcelain, which is trademarked porcelain. And now I'm about to show you one of my best finds of the day. At first I thought it could be Villeroy und Boch because they did make similar pieces. And I did research the back stamp. It is actually from Simon Peter Gurtz, made in Prussia in the late 1800s. The seller actually thought it was from the 1940s. I misunderstood and thought 50s that he had said. I paid 20 euros. There you see my husband Christoph, who's shopping with me today. And it is worth over 500 euros, and I got the deal of the day. I'm delighted to have this beautiful earthenware vase. It is Steingut, and it's from the 1950s, according to the seller. I'm going to research this back stamp and find out more. This blue and white vase from Bavaria would be another great option to keep in your gift closet. Again, fill that with flowers, bring it as a hostess gift, or simply present it as is. Wouldn't that be a nice item to gift someone? And here's another punch set featuring the castles of Germany. I think this might be the one that we have in our home. And it is nice to display. And some clocks, love that. And they even have some kitchen items here. These linens are very popular in Texas at Round Top when you find something written in German and it says meine Küche, my kitchen. And that would be to cover something in the kitchen just to keep it tidy. And here we have the utensil holder from the, probably from the 40s or 50s. And this piece of furniture here is most likely from France. It is in the French style. And of course we are on the French border and the Saarland was a French protectorate for some time. It is 135 euros, which is about $150, which is a bargain with that marble top. 
and it looks to be in pretty good condition. We're going to see some exquisite items now. Villorenbach made this originally for King Ludwig II of Bavaria. And they did, in the 90s, make some replicas. I actually have one piece. This is a limited edition. And here are photos of the original set. And King Ludwig II was also known as the Swan King. And you'll notice that the round dish has a swan on top. Lots of information on the bottom. That's the Löwendose, the Lion Box. Incredible. Absolutely an amazing collection. And this seller was quite generous showing us all of these pieces and talking about the history. Opalescent with that ruffled edge. I just love it. This is probably French crystal or glass. I don't recall the price, but I didn't take it home, so it's probably expensive. And the Eusch I mentioned, those German smokers, you know, you've seen those on my Christmas segment. I have quite a collection. And they're incense burners. Very festive for the holidays. The ivy pattern is quite lovely. Many different manufacturers made the ivy. This looks to be Rosenthal. Let's turn it over. I can tell by that edge they featured this in other patterns. The classic rose collection. Yes. The trios. These are cups and saucers with a dessert plate. Very popular in England and Canada and in Germany in the 1950s as well. That yellow rose reminds me of Texas. This is all mid-century and it's something that you see often with the sellers because it is about that time when things are turning over. This is Vintaling from Bavaria. An incredible hand-carved French buffet. Such detail. in the baskets on the bottom, that's something that we have at our home in Germany as well, from the French flea markets actually. But this one seems to have even more detail. And the prices are very fair. It seems that this is not so beloved with the new generations. And they give you pretty good deals. Here it is 600 euros, which is probably about $650. Can you imagine in an antique shop in the United States, this would be probably four or 5,000. A work of art. Someone's family photographs. And lighting wear. And I tell you what brought light to my day is meeting a viewer from Texas who was shopping the flea market, Lisa Meyer and her husband John. I was very surprised that she came over and recognized me, visited with us, and was just delighted to meet a fellow Texan who is living in Germany. And she is quite the flea market shopper. There's some Hofbauer, if you caught that. It's all clear and more stoneware. And the price is right, I would say, on the blue. It's really just a very affordable collection to start. And this small vase here is a great size. And I might add that to our collection. It does not have a back stamp. For three euros, I will take it. That's just a little over three dollars. I'm glad to have it. For three euros, I'm taking home this earthenware vase. This would actually be a great souvenir for my friends in Houston and easy to fit in the suitcase. I see some cut to clear. That cobalt is stunning. The bowl, the decanter, there's some lovely pieces. Isn't that exquisite? I should have asked the price. That would have been a nice addition to our collections. This is also from the 1950s. You can tell by the style. It's a little bit larger, a little bulkier, and it often has the gold rim. And that is also from Bavaria. Many of these patterns were made in the 1950s and 60s in the German state of Bavaria, in more trios, an exquisite crystal pattern and see how the light just hits it right. I can see these in a lighted cabinet 
And that style actually would go with just about any table setting, whether it's modern, traditional. It's almost like a palm leaf. And you could probably source that online to find the manufacturer by using Google Lens. A German punch set is coming. You see the cups? Here's the beautiful covered bowl with an opening for a ladle. This seller has boxes of Villeroy und Boch, a company that started in this very state of the Saarland in 1748. They are celebrating their 250th year and they've got some great collections that they brought out. And these are all retired patterns, mostly with some exception. The colors are just brilliant. This is the Alt Amsterdam. And I'm going to show you a warmer, also known as a Réchaud. And that's something that used to be made in all of the B&B patterns, but not anymore, sadly. You place a tea light candle inside, and then your teapot or coffee pot can be placed on top, and it stays warm while you're serving. You can sometimes find them in crystal. I'm looking for Burgenland Blau in Réchaud. I have two in Texas, but I really don't want to bring them over. I'm hoping to find it in Germany, but so far, no luck. The Acapulco pattern, Mariposa, also with the warmer, the Amapula, and some beer steins. Lots of great pieces here. The Pasadena, I remember when that launched in the 90s when I was in college. Malina with the fruit. And this seller was also at another flea market a couple of weeks later. This pattern is still active at Luxembourg. And there's the wild rose, similar to the desert rose. My mother had desert rose and then she also incorporated some of the German pattern pieces as well. And this you may see, it's called a Frühstücksbrett. I find these sometimes even in the United States at thrift stores, and it's for your breakfast bread or an evening where you have maybe just a light meal. My boss at Waterford had this pattern along with the Waterford Sheila crystal stems. And this is called Aragon from Heinrich, which is a company acquired by Villeroy und Boch. Lots of pieces here. And any retired pattern is, of course, going to be more expensive, especially in the United States. But in Germany, you can just shop the flea market. The Intarsia pattern was not made for long, and it's very expensive online. Knife rests and napkin rings. I know some of you collect this pattern. And there's the Vieux Luxembourg, which is the Alt Luxembourg, one of their oldest patterns. We have friends with this, and I just love it. I think of them when I see these beautiful dishes. And of course, dishwasher safe. V&B is really one of my favorite tabletop manufacturers. Incredible. And of course, the headquarters is nearby in Metlach. And let's see what this seller has for us today. I see some vintage candlesticks. These are most likely from France. My father-in-law used to buy lots of these at the flea market. And even some Limoges. That's when you know we're very close to the French border. They're not the collectible small ones that I featured in the past, but they are larger trinket boxes. You could place on your vanity. And some religious items. You just never know what you'll find at the flea market. Even Chinoiserie and Burgenland Green. They actually made it originally in the red, green, blue, and I've even seen brown. I quite like the green, but I am partial to my Burgenland Blau. And we use this every day in both of our homes. Let's take a closer look at the Chinoiserie bases. These would be considered floor bases, especially the larger one, and you can create a beautiful arrangement of silk or dried flowers. And it looks quite nice in an entryway. We have one in our downstairs living room. 
You may have seen it in our home tour, and it is Villa Rimbach. And just a variety of items. I like to just walk through quickly and see what catches my eye. A reticulated dish with the Indisch Blau pattern. And again, we'll talk more about that in the next segment. Oh, we even have a stowaway there. I like that back stamp. Isn't that beautiful? I can just almost see a pendant made of that with China Baroque. And lots of sellers actually put blankets on the ground because it's hard to transport tables. They don't always have large vehicles. And here's some polychrome Delft ginger jars. Polychrome meaning it has several colors. And the prices were fair on these, but upon closer examination, I see this one has a crack. So I'm gonna pass on that. There's the back stamp. And if you don't put any liquids inside, I'm sure it would be fine. But with my space being limited, I don't wanna buy anything that is cracked. This saucer is so pretty. Look at that back stamp. It's from England, from Bursalem. How about that? You don't see very much from England at German flea markets. And a chinoise replate. You could definitely display that. It doesn't have to be for serving. Bleur und Boch. That's an older back stamp. And it's a soap dish. And that would have been probably part of a vanity set originally from the maybe 1940s. Hirschgeweih, antlers. That must have been from a hunter. And it is quite large. Speaking of large, these you're probably thinking, what are these? Backpacks, baskets. They're actually for carrying grapes. The vintners would have had these. And of course they've been embellished and hand painted. And that's something I had not seen before at a flea market and a beautiful collection of beer steins. Quite a variety. And some more Delft. I could have filled suitcases here. It's just really tempting. So many beautiful pieces. And this flea market is once a month. And you can definitely look online. I will include that in the video description. And that's hand-painted Delft that windmill back stamp. There may be one exception, perhaps they're closed in December, I can't recall, but you'll definitely want to take a closer look at their website. And here's another French side table. It's a nightstand. Cut to clear. You do find lots of cut to clear goblets at the flea markets. I like the mixture. I know some of you just want to have maybe just the cobalt or the emerald or ruby but I like the variety and I have added quite a few during this trip. Beautiful porcelain collections and that coffee set. I just so enjoy all of the sellers and the things that they bring literally to the table. That looks like it could be Velour and Boch. Let's take a closer look. Yes, made in the Tsar Basin. And that's definitely an older piece. I would say from about the 1920s. And some more of the stoneware. This is a very special one from a, an artist. I'm not sure which area. We'll have to look at that back stamp more closely. And that is Vlöhmbach Alt Medlach. I recognize that pattern. And love the colors. They're a bit subdued. Beautiful back stamp. It's been a great day at the Flumach here in Homburg. I met some viewers and some of our neighbors from Germany. I'm delighted with this Delft vase, which was a deal for eight euros. Thanks again for joining Lady Marybeth. Elevate your everyday with flea market finds.